In this video, I'm going to go over some of the, the concepts behind how to back up a Mongo database. And this is a question a lot of people have. Fortunately, backing up a Mongo database is really easy. And the reason is that we can leverage some of the scalable nature of Mongo to make it more reliable and, and even accommodate backups. Let's start on the backups page here. And what you'll notice is that the backups page goes through some pretty typical backup routines, like for example, Mongo dump, which works a lot like MySQL dump, and you get a one-time snapshot of what the database looks like. That can be run while the database is running, so you, you don't need to turn off any services or shut down the database in order to take a, a dump of the database. But you'll see in a minute when I get into replica sets that it's not necessarily the best way to get a backup of your database. Now, um, other things you can actually shut down the server and back up all of the files in the data directory. If you try to take a snapshot of those files without shutting down, then you may actually end up with corrupt data. But let's go over and talk about replica sets, and this is what I'd like to walk you through today. Replica sets, ha it's a type of replication where you have a very flexible mechanism or engine within Mongo that allows you to say what data you want written where. It has a sensible way of dealing with who is the primary host so that the primary host deals exclusively with writes, whereas reads can be distributed across all replicas in the set. There are also mechanisms built into replica sets that allow you to define replica hosts in terms of physical racks, geographic locations, and other details. Uh, before I get right into dealing with replica sets and show you how they work, it's important to mention sharding. Sharding is, if you want to think about it, a type of, uh, of a counterpart idea to replica sets. Sharding distributes your data across multiple machines, but its purpose isn't necessarily to create a duplicate of the data that may exist on any one machine. Instead, sharding operates a lot like striping, where the purpose of sharding is to increase or improve the performance and throughput of your database. In, in a sharding scenario, you actually have multiple hosts that can all accept write commands. So um, replica sets and sharding can work together. You can have sharding and replica sets running side by side. But remember that sharding is a performance mechanism, whereas replica sets are a reliability and, and as I'm going to show you, a backup mechanism. So now, there are a few components that are built into replica sets. One is this idea of choosing a master, and there's a voting mechanism. And the master, or the primary host in a replica set, is the one that is responsible for rights, and it's elected by some voting scheme. So now that voting scheme means that you have to have an odd number of hosts participating in a replica set. Otherwise, you run the risk of not being able to select a primary host by majority vote. Now, not all of the hosts in a replica set need to be data hosts. So you can actually set up a Mongo instance on another machine and identify that as an arbiter in your replica set. Now what that means is that as an arbiter, that machine will have a vote in choosing the primary, but it won't receive data. So it's not available for reads or writes, and it can never be identified or chosen as the primary. Okay, so in a previous tutorial, and you can go back and watch that, you might recall that we set up MongoDB, and we have one server instance running, and we connected to that server instance and created a new collection, saved a document to it, and then loaded that back out from that collection. So what we need in order to set up a replica set is more than one Mongo instance. So I'm going to set up two additional Mongo instances, and I'm going to do this all on a single server, you'll see here. However, it's important to understand that it's not really sensible to think about setting up a replica set on a single server. The point of a replica set isn't performance, and so running a replica set on a single server doesn't buy you performance or reliability. So even though I'm showing you in this tutorial how to set up a replica set on a single server, what you'll want to do is set up your replica set across multiple hosts, and perhaps even in geographically unique locations. So the first thing we need to do, let's open up a new terminal window here, and we want to make two new data directories. So 
So we'll make Mongo data two and Mongo data three. Now we've got two new data directories for our Mongo databases. So now for this tutorial, we're going to stop the currently running Mongo service and we're going to start it back up. And not only are we going to give it a DB path, but we're going to include the REPL set parameter and we're going to call it my REPL set. And because these will all be running on the same server, we need to set them up with distinct ports. So we include the port command and we'll choose 27,000. 17 for this first server. So now we open up another tab and we'll run this again. And this time we choose data2 as our directory. The same replica set identifier and we choose the next port. So now we have a second instance running. And now let's start up our third. We'll start this on yet a different port. This we start with data directory three. Okay, now we have three instances of MongoDB running on three separate ports on this machine. So now what you'll notice is that each of these is emitting the same message. We see REPL set can't get local.system.REPL set config from self or any seed. So in order to initialize or initiate the replica set, we first have to connect to Mongo. So we do that by running Mongo. But in this case, we're connecting to a specific instance, localhost 27017. Once we're connected, we have to create a config object or a document. Now that config document is going to require an ID, which remember we chose my REPL set and the members that belong to that replica set. And this is a list of values. And then we would close out that document. And inside this list, we have three documents. And the reason we have three is because remember we set up three instances that we all want to, we want each of them to be part of this replica set. So for each instance, we provide an ID and a host. And that's the next port. So we get the next instance in this case. And then the final one we call ID two host. Oops, and notice we forgot to, I forgot to add host there. We have to make sure that it's valid JSON or BSON, if you want to think about it that way. And localhost 27,019. Okay, so now we have our config object. Next we use a shell helper rs.initiate and give it our config object. Okay, and it gives us back information saying, okay, it's true, and config now saved locally should come online in about a minute. Now, we can use another shell helper, rs.status, and that's going to give us the status of our replica set. So what you'll notice is, let's go scan back up through this detail here. The set name is my REPL set, but you'll notice that we have members 27,017 was elected as the primary. It's in good health. It's in a known state. And these other replica sets are in the process of recovering. So that means they're loading all of the data that's available in the primary. So now some other detail you get, you see that this is the primary. And naturally, this is where we are. So you don't see a heartbeat. But for these others, you see a heartbeat. And you see the ping, you see the ping time. So you get details about the health and the state of these other hosts that are part of your replica set. And that can give you an idea about latency between sites, between racks, and so on. All in all, the status looks pretty good. rs.status. 
Okay, so now this is changed, and you see that 18 and 19 are both now listed as secondary and up to date. So now when we come back and we look at the logs, we see now that we're no longer seeing the error message that we were seeing before about the replica set not being ready. Instead now we see information about replica set uh, states, replica set states, and so on. Now the other two logs for the other two instances of MongoDB that are running will show that they were secondaries, that they're now completely up to date. So for example, this initial sync done. Now let's go back to our other shell, and you'll notice that this changed now to say primary. So rather than just having a little arrow, it says primary. Let's add to my collection, so db.mycall.save, a new document. So we create a new document, and we save that. So now if we did a find, db.mycollection.find, we see that we have our original document, and now we have a new document. So now let's go have a look at one of the secondaries. So open up a new terminal window, start up Mongo, and this time we're going to have to do something a little different. 27,018. So we connect to a different instance, and you'll notice that it tells me that I'm on a secondary. So if I, right off the bat, try to do a db.mycollection.find, you'll see that I get an error. It says mas not master and slave OK equals false. I actually have to say, in terms of the replica set, since I recognize this as a secondary, that slave OK, I set that. Now when I run my find command, you'll see that it pulls it back. So what it's trying to do is make sure that I recognize, I have to, I have to acknowledge that I am on a, rep, a slave or a secondary in the replica set. So now at this point, anything that you commit, so if you add another document here, okay. and be a hammer. So we create a new document, and it's there right away. And let's go over to our secondary, and you'll notice that it's there as well. So we have our data now going to three different places. Now, something important to keep in mind, um, you can go back and configure your replica sets, and you'll remember we did our configuration uh, originally over here. And you can configure your replica set to give a particular host priority, more priority. You can also tell some hosts that they are hidden. So in other words, they'll receive a backup, but they're not available for reads. So if you have a lesser host, something that you may not want actually responding to production environment requests, but that is a backup host, I mean, it's perfectly sufficient to host your data, you may set that up as part of your replica set, but configure it so that no read requests are ever directed to that particular host. Now, notice also that from a secondary, you have visibility into the status of the replica set. So what this shows you is the primary. And for the primary, in this case, when you're connected to a secondary, it does show you a heartbeat and the ping time so that you can see how long it takes to get to the primary from this particular secondary. And then likewise, it has information about itself and then information about the other secondary as well. Now, the other nice thing is that most drivers that are replica set aware, when they connect to any one of these, if the primary ever changes, information is sent back to that driver and the ultimate transaction will be processed on the currently authoritative replica set primary. So that's it for replica sets. You now have a, a setup replica set performing real-time backups and you even have failover built in so that if for some reason your primary goes down, a new primary will be elected and all of the traffic, all transactions will be redirected to that new primary. Uh, of course, go back to the docs to look at additional configuration details and especially the geographic configuration, which is, which is really powerful with replica sets. That's it. Thanks so much.